Thank God. What's up, Mr. Conroy? There's been a bad accident in the bar. Someone's been killed. Look at me, please, Mr. Kirby. On the night of the 15th, there was a program of dance music by Mr. Henry Hall. On the third program, there was a talk on Egyptology. Do I take it, Mr. Kirby, you are an Egyptologist? Henry Hall. Yeah, that's right. Um, we had a bottle of stout barrel of meat and uh, some sandwiches and that, you know, and, uh, and then we listened to Henry Hall. Mr. Kirby, you amaze me. For the first time in my life, I find myself addressing a man who, despite all the rules of logic and natural law, experiences no difficulty at all in placing himself in three different locations at the same time. Hey. While you were at home with Miss Hoskins, listening to Mr. Hall, you were also, as Miss Hoskins has already testified, at the pictures with her, watching Oliver Twist, the young man who asked for more. You were also, as the court has already heard from three other independent witnesses, deep in conversation with Mr. Slater at the Ajax Cafe. A remarkable achievement on your part, for which you must take full credit. Do you want any more, Mr. Kirby? As I see it, you're asking me once again to subsidize your inordinate vanity. Rory! I was just talking about our victory. Well done. Thank you. This is my cousin, Sebastian Parrish, whom you may have seen on the stage. Ah, how do you do? Hello. Are you going to risk it? I think I might. Thank you. I suppose I can't persuade you to change your mind. No, you can't. Oh, but Luke. What I suggest to you is that you take Mr. Micawber's advice and learn the difference between solvency and insolvency. Rory! Hello. Splendid, thank you. You have to give in to the pain. Enjoy it. Mm. Crack of dawn, we're off to Panotta. Cornwall, it's in Yeah. I can't get away till Thursday. Mm. Discovered it during our Oxford days. We've been returning ever since. Seb here, yeah. Seb's friend Norman, <coughs> paints pretty pictures. And myself. Mr. Cubitt is a talented professional artist. Yes, yes, of course. I trust you all have a wonderful time. playing at. It was my right of way. I didn't hear you. What? I didn't hear you coming. You should have sounded your horn. I'm sorry. Well, I don't think there's any harm done. No, I suppose not. If you wouldn't mind backing up, see if we can free them. God 
God's sake, drive properly. Hello, Abel. A bit late, I'm afraid. Missed dinner, have I? No, sir. I told Mrs. Ives to keep back a lobster for you. Oh, good man. <laughs> Then, mother's meeting. See that? You can see an old boot needs mending. Another of your pesky rats, that is. Keep your voice down, George. Don't need the whole world to hear. One of them has near damn it got my ankle. What are you going to do about it, eh? It's all in hand. In hand. In hand, I said, George. As you will find out if you'll just mind your own interference. What's your Mm. This was worth motoring 200 miles for. Good evening, Decima. Evening, Mr. Watchman. Is that all you have to say to me? Yes, that's all. Pretty, isn't she? Very. Well, even prettier than last summer. I do hope you're not going to be a bore, Sebastian. You know, if a girl could do it, she'd make quite a presentable Juliet. Oh, would she? To your Romeo? Well, I don't see you playing opposite, huh? Mercutio, maybe. Anyway, Luke, this summer she only has eyes for her very handsome young fisherman, which is all that her father wants. So everybody's happy, eh? I think Decima is old enough to decide for herself. For the little beggars? Not a full time. Some utter half with driving too fast, it is best to kill me. What are they doing out there? Chap could die of thirst. Next thing I see, he's confounded car here in the garage. Strange thing is, I'm sure I've seen his face before. 
somewhere. Oh, no shortage of lunatics and cars. Put it under lock and key, out of arm's way. Oh, fair enough. Sorry, Bob. Paint is it? You've got a moment, Desmond. <laughs> Oh, God, it's the chap I ran into. I must have heard every word. I think we met on the way down. Unfortunate circumstances. Oh, I've forgotten all about that. Cigarette? Allow me to introduce myself. Yeah. Robert Lay. Luke Watchman. Luke! How are you? Good rundown? Oh, it's interesting. You're Paul. looking very well, Norman. How's the portrait coming? Oh, interesting. Come on, Norman. Double or quits. All right, then. As long as you promise to pay. Do you play? Once a year when we come down. You? His aim's deadly. Really? How deadly? I never miss. Well, well enough. Is everybody having a good time? Hello, Mr. Watchman. Gin and wine, please. When did you get here? Just over two hours ago, Miss Duffy. Oh, good. And what have you been up to? I've taken up watercolours this year. Really? Yes, I, I'm making pretty fair progress, wouldn't you say so, Norman? Um, yes, Miss Duffy, very fair progress. Oh, thank you. Well, here's good health to all, and let's pray for good painting weather. Do you mind coppers? Let me have them. I think that. There you are, you see. Told you, didn't I? The man's deadly. Oh, well done, Patrick. on the deceased, Mr. Luke Watchman, KC, was carried out by you, Dr. Shaw, at the weekend, at the request of the Illington Constabulary? It was. With what result? The main finding was a grain and a half of cyanide in the blood. Enough to cause death? Half a grain would have been sufficient. <laughs> the index finger of the right hand had been penetrated to the bone by the dart, virtually pinned to the dart board. But there can be no doubt death was caused by poisoning. Visitors to St. Nicholas's Church at Loo will find in its tower a skull's cage for the incarceration of nagging wives. <laughs> but that's worth looking at. But you're not married, bro. You went 30 miles from Pinotta. Sorry. Shields acid mixed with prussic acid. The extermination of rats on Mr. Pomeroy's premises. Mr. Bartram, did you hand over the substance direct to the purchaser? No, sir. A Mr. Parrish came into the shop on Thursday afternoon, acting on behalf of Mr. Pomeroy. He said the rat bane I supplied previously was ineffective. Would I please ginger it up a bit? I'm putting together, our Mr. Watchman seems to be a bit of a handful. A bit of a reputation, I'm afraid. First at Oxford, very young KC, very effective in court. It was lethal in the Slater case. The only time I saw him in action. Sounds like a gentleman who should have gone all the way to the top. Did you, um, did you like him? 
Bad lad. Superintendent Harper, would you tell the court the results of certain forensic tests, namely to the pieces of a broken glass from which the deceased drank brandy, and to a bottle of iodine which was applied to his pierced finger. Neither the broken brandy glass nor the bottle of iodine contained any traces of cyanide nor any other poisonous substance, sir. I suppose the coroner brought in an open verdict. Death by misadventure, Inspector. What else could it be? I'm going to close my private bars bad enough. Height of the season. Everything's topsy turvy. Glasses out of the bar. Darts taken away by the police. Yes, well, you'll have to get used to it. A man has died on these premises from rat poison. Brought into this hotel at your instigation. Well, is this our office? It's my parlor. Mr. Pomeroy. I'm so sorry we have to get under your feet. I hope it won't be for too long. Thank you. Taking their cases up? Uh, yes, two and four, was that right? That's what I said. All right, no need to snap. Who's snapping? Nice motor car. Belonged to the actor Parrish, Watchman's cousin. Oh, I bet that cost him a bob or two. <laughs> if indeed it's paid for. Fingerprints on the jar? Only Pomeroy's. How much of the poison was left? It was full. Oh, we've got the stuff in a bottle now, back at the station with the other things. You've had it analysed? Not yet, no. Well, I didn't think it was necessary. We know what it was. Do we? Well, with respect, sir, I think perhaps you should have your lab boys look at it right away. Just sit down there, sir. Now, I want you to take your time, Mr. Pomeroy, and tell us what happened last Friday evening in the private bar. Well, now, let me think. There was a dickens of a storm. The lights kept on flickering on and off. They were coming to the end of a game of round the clock. We're with you in a minute. Next thing, they're all at it, drinking brandy. Uh, 17? If I had had any inkling of what was going to happen, I'd have picked up that blessed bottle and hurled it into the sea. But you didn't, did you, Mr. Pomeroy? No. I did not. Yes. I call for a drink on the winning team. What'll it be? Well, I declare the drinks are on me. My bottle of Courvoisier Decima, my dear. Oh. Brandy or rum? Do 
time we had a new road in this place, if you ask me. Blooming government talking about utopia for the masses. Equality and all that malarkey, and you can't even get into the village on a wet day without driving through a flood. Oh, come on, George, things aren't that bad. <laughs> what were you saying? That's some candles for the private desk. Sharp? Oh, that's better. Now then, who hasn't had any? Will. Here you are. What about the other half, Dick? I'll be on my way. Shall I stop out? I'm not in this. Just uh, down the bottom, back up this way. I'll stop in again and have it then. Oh, Rather M than me. Just in case. <laughs> what a good idea. Now then, Luke, being on the losing side, are you prepared to risk your hands tonight? Of course I am. I'm game, but I insist on new darts. Abel, break out with your arrows. You take care of them. Aim straight, for God's sake. Nobody's asking you, are they? Not likely to. I feel like William Tell's son without the apple. Do be careful. Far away. So I told Desi to phone for a doctor. And I went out to look for Dick Oates. Thank you, Mr. Pomeroy. Sorry to have taken up so much of your time. Oh, you're welcome. Well, if there's nothing else. Nothing else. For the time being. So, time to look under a few stones. See what's crawling underneath. I thought it was time for lunch. <laughs> and there's a smuggler's tunnel all the way down to the beach. I think we can safely leave smuggling to His Majesty's customs and excise, don't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, sorry, sir. Aha! Our matinee idol. Mr. Parrish. Chief Inspector. I was very shocked by the death of your cousin. We got to know each other a little as colleagues. I find it difficult to take in what's happened. 
keep expecting to see him there at the bar. That's a nightmare. Keep expecting to wake up. I'm sorry. If only I haven't brought that bloody rat poison back from Illington. There's no reason to blame yourself for that. You asked the chemist to ginger it up a bit. Who told you that? Good morning. Ah, oh, uh, you haven't met my friend Norman Cuby, Chief Inspector Allen. Oh, yes. Is there anything I can tell you, Inspector? I love being questioned. The man who threw the dart. Leg. Did Watchman know, or had he met him before? I don't think so. Sir? No, I'm sure they hadn't. Look, if there's nothing more, we ought to go. Get on with my portrait. While the tide's right. Ah, oh, yes, of course. Well, Mr. Parrish seemed very distressed at the death of his cousin. I nearly cried my eyes out. Luke Watchman seemed affable enough at his club, but I did detect a certain atmosphere between him and Parrish. I'm not sure Mr. Cubitt might not have something to do with it. Where's Mr. Leg off to? And thou, my friend, since unavailing woe bursts from my heart and mingles with the strain, had the sword laid thee with the mighty low, pride might forbid e'en friendship to complain. You're looking pleased with yourself, sir? Because I am. I mean, putting poor old Luke to one side for the moment, you could say things are looking distinctly brighter. While I was fighting for king and country... Winning your military cross. Luke was absolutely coining it. So I'm looking forward, Norman, to being a man of means. Keep still. What's wrong? Nothing, as long as you stop fidgeting. I thought we might start with a little holiday. I mean, a proper holiday abroad. India, maybe. Then, well, if Luke's money is all I take it to be, I might go into management. I always wanted to do the vortex. We could do the sets and costumes. Fine. And I bought my boat with a gratuity. Probably paid over the arts for it. A bit different from flying, I reckon, sir. It's a lot safer, most of the time. What do you want to know, Inspector? How well did you get on with Luke Watchman? I didn't. Did you quarrel? We had a difference of opinion. He thought he was welcome here in Penotter. I didn't, and told him so. Was, was that on account of Decima Pomeroy, Mr Moore? You seem to know all the answers, Inspector. Why ask the question? Afternoon. Oh dear, I'm so sorry. I didn't hear you. I didn't mean to startle you. Well, nice spot you've chosen. Yes, but I can't get my sea right today. It keeps coming out too green. I'm sick of it. Oh God, that's enough for today. You tried mixing cobalt with a touch of aquamarine and white. Oh yes, I've tried that. And it still comes out looking like spinach and mashed potatoes. Shall I? 
Thank you. Miss Duffy, were you by any chance painting her last Friday? Yes, indeed I was. And in view of everything that happened that day, every single minute is etched in acid up here. Every minute? I was on my way up here. It was about half past ten. I was just passing the old graveyard. Well, don't be so childish. Can't you see how stupid you're being? Stupid? What do you think he's come here for? Well, I don't know. To be with his jolly friends? Desi. Will? Oh, don't look at me like that. What do you expect me to do? Push him off the cliff? <sighs> Good morning. Morning. What makes you so sure she meant what? Well, everybody in Penalton knows she had some sort of fling with him last year. A fling? Uh, well, anyhow, she seems to be spending a lot of time with young Moore, much to old Abel's relief. He'd rather a local man than some sophisticated London barrister. Lord, yes. Some sort of power over Power? Yes, he's really got to lift his little finger and... It's not just dissimilar either. Just a few things to settle first. No, I've been in since. Fox, what are you looking for? Anything that may have been overlooked? Right, Mr. Pomeroy. As soon as I've done in here, you'll get your keys back. Good afternoon, Miss Pomeroy. You're from Scotland Yard, aren't you? Yes, I am. I imagine this must be quite a change for you after the hurly-burly of Oxford. It's different. Inspector, I know why you're here. Why don't you just ask your questions? Very well. I'm trying to find out how Luke Watchman spent last Friday, the day that he died. I see. Where he went, whom he met. I know, for example, that you spent the morning with Will Moore. And that you quarrelled. Who says so? But you'd also met Luke Watchman that morning. Was he the reason that you quarrelled? I'd much rather you admitted it yourself, Miss Pomeroy. Although I know it to be true. Oh? How? A French cigarette packet, a few dog ends with lipstick, and this. It's yours, I think. How very clever of you. <laughs> so? Would you please care to tell me what happened when you met Luke Watchman that Friday morning? It can't matter much now, can it? Now that he's dead? It might. I usually take a walk along the cliff in the morning. I'd just got to the headland and Luke called out to me. Decima. I want to talk to you. What about? 
Sit down, have a cigarette, and I'll tell you. This refugee outfit of yours. Thinking of joining, are we? Hardly. Decima, you're... You can do anything you want. Why waste yourself? You're not in love with me, Lou. You just want me. I adore you, Desi, and you know it. Come here. Luke, it's over. Is it? Leave me alone. Oh, for God, you'd never come back. I chased after Will, but of course he'd seen me and Luke, and there was a terrible row. Did you now made up? Yes, I think so. Well, I hope so. Inspector bullying you, Decima. Just doing my duty, Mr. Moore. Come on. Luke loved this place. He was happy here. And it's only fitting he should remain here, Mr. Parrish. Wednesday at noon, then. Thank you, Vicar. You've been a great comfort. looking for, Brad? Well, there should be a massive rock over there in the shape of a woman, more or less. There isn't. Well, very disappointing for you. Do you think we could get back to the private bar? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, the wood box. By the fireplace? Yeah, stuffed with newspapers, stinking of brandy. Brandy? Interesting. Yes, that's what I thought. Anything else? Oh, yes. <laughs> According to the legend, that headland is where Uther Pendragon, the father of King Arthur, met Igraine, the beautiful wife of the Duke of Cornwall. You can just imagine it, can't you, sir? So flashed and fell the brand Excalibur, but ere he dipped the surface, rose an arm clothed in white samite, mystic, wonderful, and caught him by the hilt and brandished him three times and drew him under the mere. Port of Mere was a lake, sir. <laughs> Nothing gets past you, does it, Brad? Come on. Rotten thing to live with. Seeing man in full health suddenly die. When you've thrown the dart. A damn silly trick. I should have tried it. <laughs> I can imagine what they've been saying to you. I can feel their suspicion down my neck like a draft. Whose suspicion, Mr. Leg? Abel Pomeroy, for one. You see, Chief Inspector, I'm a pacifist. And since his daughter, Decima, sympathizes, he blames me. He thinks I turned her against him. Perhaps. But I think we should concentrate on the death of Luke Watchman. He must have moved his hand. He must have done that. I had nothing against the man personally. I hardly even knew him. If I were you, Chief Inspector, I would be making inquiries as who stood to gain by his death. I've got all the essentials. What's bothering you, Norman? I'm fed up. You and me? With this place. I can finish this at home. I 
to put off tomorrow, sir. Well, I don't see that meeting with the chief inspector's approval. Oh, him. Don't you like him? Oh, I think he's rather nice. Nice? Him and his little Sir Echo. Oh, uh, come in, sir. Mrs. Ives. I'm sorry to disturb you, sir, but uh, some of our guests like a nice hot drink last night, and I was wondering whether you like that. Palmer Ives. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. The Chief Inspector would like to go over what happened last Friday night. Do we have to go over it all again? I'm afraid we must. When the dart struck Luke Washington, whereabouts were you? About here, I think. Why did you give him the brandy? To revive him. He'd gone so pale, I just picked up a glass and... Where from? The bar counter. Would you mind? Whose glass was it? It could have been Sebastian's. I don't know. I didn't stop to think whose glass it was. But you don't think of things like that in a crisis, do you? No, you don't. Please, go on. Um... I poured some more brandy and I took it over to him. I said something like, have a sip, make you feel better. Then I held it up to his lips and... Oh, it was awful, I'm sorry, I can't. Just forget about us, miss. Try to remember what happened. I did manage to get him to drink some of the brandy. I think he was struggling to say something. I can't be sure. Thank you, miss. That's just about what the others told us. Close the private bar. Good gracious. Why did this happen? Of course I'm entitled to nerves. Now, listen, when something as devastating as this happens, there must be a reason. Yes, sir. Well, I want to know what it is. We need another talk with young Will. There's something not quite right between him and our landlord's daughter. What's that? Oh, she lied to us this morning, Brad. She knew whose glass it was. What was she frightened of? Perhaps she's trying to implicate our thespian. What's wrong? Nothing. What's the matter? I'm thinking of cutting this so-called holiday short, getting out of here. Why? Because I've been on to Luke's solicitor. And? And I've just heard how cousin Luke liked to have his little joke from beyond the grave, at my expense. Listen to this, bruh. Robert 
Leg, agent for the Devon and Cornwall Philatelic Society, secretary and treasurer of the Refugee Rehabilitation and Resettlement Fund local branch. Previous history, none. Too busy. I don't like mysteries. Come in. Excuse me, gentlemen. Mrs. Ives is wondering if you'll be taking lunch. What do you say, bro? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Trick in the bar first, with the appetite? Even better. Got something rather special. I think you'll enjoy it. Not rat poison, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> As my next of kin... He's he... left you all his money? No. Oh, that's what he promised. And no one knew better than Luke how much I need it. He hasn't cut you out. No. The joke, Norman, is that you and I inherit... Me? Jointly. I hope you find it amusing. Why me? Oh, I can think of several reasons. You needn't look so astonished. I'm looking astonished because I am astonished. Really? I know that as recently as last Christmas, I was his sole heir. So what could possibly have taken place, dear boy, between then and now, eh? Search me. There you are, son. That's a fine dry sherry, that is. Indeed it is. Kind of you. Good health to you, gentlemen. And to you. Oh, very nice. I'll do them if you like. That's no trouble. Just tell me who... Yes, ma'am. Get a decanter for the gentleman's sherry. Excuse me, if Mr. Lake can spare you. Thank you very much, sir. I'll be ready on Tuesday. Well, it better be because I need no. to go to a wedding on Wednesday. Why? Don't worry, sir. What's wrong with it? Everything. Uh, thank you very much. Makes you look like a spiv. I take it you have got a tie somewhere in this benighted establishment that a gentleman can wear. I think it's rather nice. It isn't. Luke would have had a seizure. I don't think Luke would care tuppence whether we wear black or not. He may not. I do. And I knew him rather better than you. Better? Fractionally. I shan't rest, dear boy, until we get to the bottom of this whole sordid business. Meantime, we conduct ourselves here with as much grace and dignity as we can muster. Black armbands as well, I suppose. Join you, Mr. Lake. Oh, help yourselves. Thank you. Do you know I've always found this interesting, but I've somehow never found the time. Well, you need time, all right. Never interested me until, well, I became ill. Oh, bad luck. Very ill. I've only had time on my hands. Seven years. Long time out of a man's life. So, what brings you to this part of the world? Well, I came here to regain my strength. Plenty of Cornish pasties, eh? <laughs> I got a hold of the Philatelic Society and landed a job as their agent for Devon and Cornwall. And I do volunteer work for the refugees, which is no one's business but my own, Mr. Allen. Oh, no, of course not. Luke Watchman. What about him? Did you know him? Well, not socially, not to speak to him, no. But I never forget a face. I recognise him straight away. Oh, really? He didn't recognize you? Well, why should he? Oh, it was a long time ago, the early years of the war. He was a sharp young barrister on the way up. At someone's party. I see. Well, there didn't seem to be any point to mention it the other day. Luke Watchman, KC. Legal bigwig in his world. Me and mine. Might have taken it the wrong way, don't you think? <laughs> Perhaps. This 
Come on. Right. Good afternoon. What is it? I was wondering if you could help me again. Maybe. Miss Pomeroy, I've got a man murdered. And I'm completely in the dark. Well, I don't know what I can do. No? I was wondering if you might tell me... Tell you what? Whatever it is that's troubling you. Wouldn't it be better to tell me now? It was Friday morning. After Will and I had quarrelled about Luke. Will was in the garage yard. Um, I saw him going to the stable. I don't know what for. There was nothing in there. Except the rat poison. Ever since then, I've been frantic, wondering, was it Will? Thank you. But haven't you something else to tell me? The brandy you gave Luke Watchman. You've been wanting me to think that the glass you poured it into might have been just anybody's. But that isn't the case, is it? It was Will's glass, wasn't it? Pensive brow? No, sir. Angry. Well, with myself. Trying to call something to mind. I can't get there. It's just... There's something that should have been there and wasn't. I can't remember what. When you do all that, though, perhaps you let me know. It's a bit embarrassing, Chief Inspector. Just as well you suggested doing an analysis. You mean the liquid from the jar that Abel Pomeroy put in the garage? Turned out to be surgical spirit. Well, look on the bright side, sir. At least we've confirmed one thing. Now we know where the poison came from. Our murderer took the pot out of the rat hole emptied out the acid and put the surgical spirit in instead. He or she was counting on it being left, untouched and untested. Then if you're right, if looks as if he or she emptied the stuff into another container, ready to put it on the dart that killed Watchman. No. What do you mean, no? Actually, sir, I'm convinced it wasn't the dart that killed Watchman. We've got the evidence, Alan. Cyanide on the damn thing. Only the slightest traces. Sir, hydrocyanic acid is highly volatile. Expose it to the air and it evaporates. In fact, there was no way that dart could have been poisoned before it was thrown. Mr. Pomeroy opened a new set and they were in full sight of everybody, all the time. But the blasted lights were going on and off. Oh, not between the time that Abel opened the new box of darts and a dart was thrown that hit Watchman. And in any case, by the time the dart was thrown, the bulk of any cyanide would have simply evaporated. So after the candles were knocked over and the whole place was in darkness, somebody... The murderer? Picked up the dart, smeared it with poison. Incriminating leg asked for each of the dart. Exactly. So the question remains, how did the poison get into Watchman? That dog. That's what's missing. The collection box.
indispensable in an art that was handed down from generation to generation. She's over the worst now, Inspector. Oh, good. Thank hey. you. Mrs. Freeman, I can't tell you how sorry we are about this. It was bad luck, really. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. Hmm? Mrs. Freeman, did anybody else know that you'd be picking up the RSPCA box today? No. As a matter of fact, I was early going for it. Early? Because of the holidays. I usually collect them at the end of the holidays. You must have been surprised to find a bottle. Oh, no, no. People put in all sorts of things, you know. Buttons and uh, bottle tops and bus tickets. <laughs> I thought when I saw this little bottle roll out like a silly duffer, I put it up to my nose to smell it like you do, and I suddenly felt very sick and dizzy, and um, and I don't, I don't remember much else. I don't know what to say, sir. A lethal bottle of Ardy, just sitting there in the dog, right under our noses, and we. I know. I feel ashamed of myself. Oh, nonsense, Brer. If you do see the implication, before it got into the dog, our killer had put it into Pomeroy's first aid box. Where anybody could have used exactly. it. Exactly. Before legs tricked with darts. But clearly got no conscience at all. But he couldn't have known there was going to be an accident with the darts. No, he couldn't, but I think he managed to engineer one by making sure that everybody was drinking Parrish's brandy. Whereas he... Or she. ...stayed stone-cold sober, chucking their brandy into the wood box. There you are. Ready to do what could only be done in the dark. Switch the iodine bottles, put the innocent one where the lethal one was, and throw that one into the dog. Waiting for Mrs. Freeman to pick up her little jock. Hmm. Her dog. Oh, yeah. Be at usual place tomorrow, 8.30 a.m. Must talk. Thank you. 
Whatever you want, just tell me and I'll do it. I just don't think I can stand much more of this. Oh. If you've been through what I've been through, then you, you might begin to understand. Of course I understand. I've been walking around asking questions and talking to everyone. But when it comes down to it, who's it really interested in? It's me, isn't it? Just don't draw any attention to yourself and you'll be all right. Please have to do that. Duty, we all have to. Well, self-pity won't get you anywhere. I see you too. No. You know how to do my best for you, but I... I can't. I... I won't... <laughs> Bob, you know how much I feel for you. Why can't people leave me alone? that you come back to the inn, put on a black tie, come to the funeral and show some respect for the dead. The man that is born of a woman hath but a short time to live and is full of misery. He cometh up and is cut down like a flower. He fleeth as it were a shadow and never continueth in one stay. In the midst of life we are in death. Of whom may we seek for succor? Which one's the but killer, bro? Oh Who's the front runner? Well, I know which one I'd bet on. Yes, I know. Yes, O oh Lord God, most but they all had motive. Oh Lord, most most of them had opportunity. The holy and most merciful I wouldn't rule anybody out. Into the bitter pains of including the ladies. Pain. Including the ladies. Thou knowest, Lord, the secrets of our hearts. <laughs> I was wondering if our young for fighter much, pilot wasn't too good to be true. Even Pomeroy. Too true to be good. Oh. Things we don't have a scrap of solid, incontrovertible evidence against any of them. Lord most holy, O oh God most mighty, a holy and merciful Saviour, thou most worthy Judge eternal, suffer us not, at our last hour, for any pains of death, to fall from thee. Cubit carrying favor with the aristocracy. I'm sorry? Oh, didn't you know? She's poor old Danaffel's system. Irish peer? Mm. No one had even heard of him until he hit the headline. He was convicted, wasn't he, of embezzlement and fraud. Bit of a coast to land. Got cousin Luke started. What? Well, why do you think the on violet's so chummy, eh? Dear cousin Luke was leading counsel for the defense. Brilliant performance. Got the old fraudster a minimum sentence, Duffy's undying devotion, and set him on the road to his silk. Don Athol. There was another defendant in the case, wasn't there? No, his partner. Jingle? Dingle, something to Kensian. Can't remember much about it. I wasn't around at the time. King of country. Pringle. Well, it's only to be expected. Villages are like that. Close community. They're getting restless. Trouble? Who knows? What time does your train get into Paddington? Six. Be at the yard before seven and back here tomorrow. Hmm. Colonel Brannington, the chief constable, has asked me to take you both 
to his house for dinner tomorrow night. That's extremely kind of him. Inspector Fox and I will be delighted to join him. He's keen to know how it's going. Then I hope we won't disappoint him, sir. Sir, what do we have to wear? Back tie, I suppose. Is that a problem? Congratulate you on your inheritance, Mr. Cubitt. Oh, yes. Well, I wasn't expecting anything. In that case, you might as well make he was really Seb's friend. I'm not complaining, naturally. When did you hear? Um, Seb told me yesterday. I rather wish he hadn't. It makes me a suspect, doesn't it? Well, both of us, really. You see, we were both flat broke. Don't talk nonsense. Artistic temperament. Overactive imagination. Not something I suffer from, Mr. Parrish. What have you been saying? We may have just come from his funeral. But I want to know when this inquiry is going to be finished. Oh, well, he's got a point there. We're all sick of it. So why don't our sleuths get on with it? Ladies and gentlemen, I can understand your feelings, but this is a murder inquiry. These things do take time. But I can promise you one thing. I shall find the murderer. I'm uh, sorry to bring you in, but Bailey's gone sick of us. And I need this dusted for Dad's sharpish. Photos? Usual drill, okay? Uh -huh. No thanks. Oh, um, hello. Uh, could you give me the number of Moss Bros, please? Morning. You see that? Central pocket loop. Tinted arch there, and there a plain wall. This one, left index of the Tommy bottle. Middle right, particularly good Alna loop there. From the tumbler, an exact match. Yes, so who? Old Bailey, March 1941. Does that answer your question? It does indeed. Miss Duffy, may I join you? Of course. You know, I didn't realise you were the late Lord Dunathel's sister. And I didn't realise that you were Sir George Allen's brother. <laughs> you heard of my brother's trouble. His health suffered dreadfully. When he came out, he'd lost the will to live. Not so the brilliant young barrister who led for the defence. Hmm? You kept in touch. I was always grateful for what he did. Miss Duffy, your brother was sentenced to two years imprisonment. His co-defendant, Alexander Pringle, got seven years. Was that 
Fair, would you say? Patrick was lucky. The family solicitors wanted the best defence. Duke Watchman was the best. He acted for Pringle as well, you know. Mr Pringle wasn't so lucky, was he? I wonder why. Perhaps his face didn't fit. Or was there another reason? You seem to know an awful lot, Inspector. It is my business, Miss Duffy. You've been spying on me, haven't you? Well, I've told you all I know. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have other things to do. You think it was me, don't you? What? You think I poisoned him? No. Look, if we can't be honest with each other... There could have been poison in the brandy I gave him. It was my glass. I know. There were no traces of poison in the pieces, none at all. Friday morning. After you left me, where did you go? Why? Well, who's been talking to you? No one. It was me. I saw you. I saw you go into the garage yard, into the stable. And what? Take out the rat poison? You think I took it? No. Well, I don't know. Ives. Oh, Inspector Fox and I won't be dining in tonight. Oh. I'm sorry, we've been summoned by the Chief Constable. Oh, Colonel Bramington. <laughs> the Chief Inspector? Can you spare me a few minutes? How did you know that Bob Legg and Alex Pringle were the same man? It wasn't difficult, Miss Duffy. No, I suppose not. Now it's out, I really don't know whether I'm glad or sorry. And you knew about his pre-war history? Yes. He joined the British Union of Fascists in 1936. He was a Nazi in all but name. It's a long way from being a pacifist. Now perhaps you can understand his behaviour. He felt his past closing in on him. Forgive me for asking, but your feelings for Mr. Legg? Completely unreciprocated, Inspector. Jesse, two beers. Is it finished? Oh, yes, it's finished. 
I think we can safely say it's over and done with. May I see it? I think it's wonderful. Nice of you to say so, but I'm glad it's finished. I've had enough of it. Desi, what happened to that sherry? Sherry, Mr. Fox. Oh, thank you. Hey, I'm Missy. This away, please. Constable Oates. No one is to leave the premises. Is that clearly understood? Sir? Close all the doors. Somebody has tried to kill Inspector Fox. I can't believe it. Smell of treachery about the place. I don't want to see the doctor. I should have taken your advice. Huh? What? Gone home a couple of days ago. Chief Inspector or no Chief Inspector. Um, where, where is Inspector Fox? Um, he's upstairs, the room at the end of the landing. Thank you. Long. In that case, we might as well make ourselves comfortable. Decima, my dear, I wonder if your father has anything worthy of the occasion tucked away behind the bar. Hardly a time to start making fools of ourselves, Sebastian. I should keep off the sherry in future. Just a little sodium nitrate, Inspector. It's beef tea. Is that all right, sir? Yes, yes. If you'll take it, it's nothing better. Come in. To disturb you, Mr. Fox, sir. But I thought a little beef tea might be in order in the circumstances. Now, then. here we go. Oh, Mr. Fox. You didn't get that lying in bed? No. I think I got it falling over. Hmm. Well, I think we better have somebody to clean that up. Now, you just hang on a minute.
to you. What? Why couldn't you trust me? And I got to thinking that iodine would probably be the best. But then I find that the blessed iodine bottle's missing from the first aid box in the bathroom. Fred Fox. I can't leave you for a minute. Oh. <laughs> it's just what I said, Mr. Allen. Right. Oh, yes, yes. Mind you, to be a lot simpler with just one box, there's certain less confusion. I mean, take last Friday morning when Mr. Leg cut himself shaving. There was blood streaming down his chin. He was in a fair pickle. I had to open up the cupboard in the private bar. Mrs. Ives? They chung out the other first aid box. I thought Mr. Pomeroy had the only key. Oh, I have a key to every lock in the place. Except Mr. Pomeroy's safe, of course. Did anybody see Mr. Legg with the box? Well, as far as I know, no. Thank you, Mrs. Ives. You've been a great help. I have? You have. <laughs> Like, sir. What about him? Mr. Legg, he's gone and run for it. into the parlor. Sit him down. This time, keep him there. Yes, sir. Well, that's it, then. You still have to prove it, sir. No. Anything you'd like me to do? You could search his room, top to bottom. What are we looking for? I don't know, but somehow he's managed to poison a sherry decanter without anybody noticing. This is an outrage. You do know that, don't you? Oh, yes, sir. A terrible outrage. Reckon so? Perhaps you'd better empty the pockets, Mr. Legg. You can't keep me here. Is that all? Thank you, Mr. Pomeroy.
No, it's leg. I need a doctor. I gave express instructions that no one was to leave. Why did you choose to run off? I had to. Had to? Yes, had to. I couldn't spend another minute in that room. Everyone looking at me as if I did it. I have bad nerves. I'm highly strung. Ah, yes, of course. Your, your illness. Seven years, I think you said. Pentonville Prison, wasn't it? I don't deny my prison sentence. Grotesquely unjust though it was. It was a hundred times worse than any illness. Dunnevil should have rotted in that prison until he died. You murdered Luke Watchman. No. Because you believed he got an Athol off of the light sentence at your expense. He did. By shifting the blame onto you. He did. And all the time with that damn smile on his face. Well, perhaps you murdered him because you feared he would expose your past as a Nazi sympathizer. You're improvising. He hasn't got a case. Oh, but I have, Mr. Legg. It's the oldest cheat in the book. If you can't find the guilty one, you pin it on the nearest man with a criminal record. How dare you? Convince me. I not only know that you did it, I know how you did it. You took the iodine bottle from the upstairs bathroom. You laced it with cyanide from the rat hole. And then, using the pretext of a shaving cut, you gained access to the first aid box and the cupboard in the bar. Luke Watchman died the way you planned it. Not from a poison dart, but from poisoned iodine. And this evening you got scared and you attempted to poison Inspector Fox and myself. Now, what do you say to that, Mr. Alexander Pringle? What an intriguing maze a policeman's mind is. I would like to see that doctor now, please, if I may. Any luck, Superintendent? Nothing. I'm afraid he's got the better of us. Yes, I could do, Mr. Allen. Thank you, Mr. Pomeroy. There must be some way we can hold him. Give us more time. I don't see how, sir. He's guilty of murder and attempted murder. And I'm going to have to let him walk out of there. I want you to understand that I will be bringing an official complaint against you, personally, Chief Inspector. And now I am sick and tired of this farce. I'd like my things, please. I think you'll find, Superintendent, that this is hydrocyanic acid. And it was dropped into a very fine sherry. Goodbye.
Thank you. Here, a guidebook for you. It's a present. Will, can you ever forgive me for not trusting you? I love you. It's not a bad life here, you know. And there are worse ways of making a living. As Luke said that I was wasting my life. That I should better myself. <laughs> you know, it's an awful thing to say. But now he's dead, I feel quite free. He'd never have married you anyway. You'd never have been good enough for him. Pig! You sure you're good enough for me? Yes. Lobster catcher. Bet you can't catch me. <laughs> So what's in store for Mr. Parrish now? Resting? Having the faintest. Could say leg did Sebastian a bit of good, indirectly. And me. Do you know leg must have had watchmen in his sights for a very long time? Poor old Luke. Leg was an opportunist. An improviser. Just talking about leg. You know, he must have waited and waited until he saw his chance. Doesn't bear thinking about. Now, I must get back to my own compartment. <laughs> Give my regards to Miss Troy. Small world. Oh. Well, there's our man. He was a man who created his own darkness. 